Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign review, this time covering Krokgar. So he's gone under a fair number of changes since Warhammer 2. Most of them greatly improve his faction. So his start position is now the Golden Tower, which is a good landmark settlement, because it's a good landmark here. Uh, but previously he started at the Temple of Skulls, which I'm actually not sure if that settlement still exists in Warhammer 3. He's still going up against Clan Mordkin, which was his primary initial enemy in um, Warhammer 2, but the positioning of the armies here makes it a lot quicker to deal with this, because previously all the settlements were quite spread out, so Krokka, even if you were being super aggressive, it just take you a while to get a couple of settlements going, just due to the distance between each settlement, but in Warhammer 3, they're much closer together, and you can take out this enemy earlier, so that you can focus on the, the you know, the more larger threats out there apart from just dealing with Skaven. There's more Skaven down here in the south if that's what you want to deal with, but you've got a lot more options because you're no longer stuck in like a corner of the map, focused on a linear sort of campaign, which I think is more interesting. But the most notable change for Krokgar is his faction effects here. Now in Warhammer 2, the player was heavily incentivized to have all of their armies essentially commanded by slans, especially life slans, because they were just the superior commander and also to recruit pretty much nothing but Stegodons, which allowed you to sort of bypass supply line problems that, that the game suffered from. But in Warhammer 3, you don't really have those supply line problems. Slans are still really good, but the faction effects here actually incentivizes you to have your armies led by Saurus Oldbloods. Reduced upkeep cost by 15%, it's nothing to scoff at, and weapon strength plus 1% per character rank for Saurus Scar veterans and Saurus Oldbloods. That means that by the time they hit rank 50, they are either 50% or 49% uh, extra damage dealing um, compared to what they were doing in Warhammer 2, which is not insignificant. On top of that, if you look at this building here, at tier 4, it increases the recruit rank of Saurus Scar Veterans and Saurus Old Bloods faction-wide, which means once you can recruit them at rank 10, you can pop down the Blessing of Choctec, providing you with an income from settlement building plus 2% faction-wide, and since the income from settlement buildings has been buffed since Warhammer 2, you can get something of an economy cheese going, where you can recruit that Lord, put the point in, and then disband it. The Lord only costing 1,000 gold. Now, it's not like a huge economic buff. Like, if you had 100 settlements, you'd roughly get about 400 extra gold per turn. So, it's a pretty decent return on investment in the late sort of campaign. So, that's something that is available to Krokgar. Um, overall, I think that Krokgar's campaign is quite interesting, more interesting than it was in Warhammer 2. You've got more variety of enemies, you're not stuck in a corner of the map. Uh, in terms of difficulty, I'd say it's sort of mid-ranged. This is the kind of campaign where I don't think there's a sweet spot. Just pick whatever difficulty you're comfortable with, from easy difficulty to legendary. I would personally think that it would be more interesting to play on higher difficulties, just because Krokgar is a very strong faction, and you don't want to get bored, you know, 20 turns into it. So playing on the higher difficulties, generally speaking, will give you more of a challenge. But that's, you know, coming from my perspective, which may not be yours. Uh, but overall, I do recommend this campaign. I think that the only thing that the Lisbon really need an improvement on is the geomantic web. It's not an interesting mechanic. Everybody knows it needs a rework, and hopefully. Hopefully they're going to get one later down the track. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Krokgar and which legendary lord you'd like me to cover next. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Later, guys.